do you think of getting started with Warpaint's Fnatic? In this video, I'm going to paint this beautiful striking Scorpion Exarch model from start to finish using only Warpaint's Fnatic from the Army Painter and I'll share all of my findings and issues along the way so you can find out if these are the right paints for you. I'm Starly from Tale of Painters and these are the 5 things I learned about Warpaint's Fnatic I wish I knew before. Usually, I make sure that my paint reviews are as balanced and unbiased as humanly possible. This video will be a more personal affair. I'm just going to paint a miniature from start to finish with the new Warpaints Fanatic and tell you unfiltered what I like and what I don't like so you can draw your own conclusions. By the way, I'm not part of the Army Painters factory team or part of the social media bubble. I receive these paints for free as samples like most of the paints I review, but I don't take any paint payment and don't give companies any say in what videos and content I make. I painted this model purely for research, because as I regularly test paints on YouTube, I need to gain practical experience with each range. So let's get started with this striking Scorpion Exarch. For priming, I just used a dark green spray primer. It's a thin coat of Renegade Green that I had left over for my review of Colorforge's primers. A lighter green would have been better, for example, Sick Green from the Vallejo Hobby Paint range. The Army Painter has also several green color primers, but I've had recurring issues with clogged nozzles and cans losing their pressure, so I can't recommend them anymore. I hope they upgrade their primers just like they did with the war paint range. As you can see, I applied the primer quite thinly because I plan to base coat the model with an airbrush to test how war paints fanatic behave. Let's see how that goes. As I've mentioned in my Warpaints Fanatic review, most of the colors are rather thick and you have to add quite a bit of thinner to make them flow well through the airbrush. I used Vallejo thinner here, but the Army Painter also has its own airbrush thinner. As a rule of thumb, it's always a good idea to stick to the same brand as the paints you want to dilute. In my first attempt, the paint was too thin, as you can see here. In my next attempt it was too thick and I got these ugly splatters. However, once I found the right ratio of paint and thinner, which was around 2 to 3 parts of thinner and 1 part of paint, Warpaint's Fanatic sprayed well. I'm using Wild Green from the Deep Green Triad here, which is the perfect base color for the striking Scorpion paint scheme I had in mind. I could also have applied this as a central gradient over the Dark Green Primer, but I wanted a classic Flat Games Workshop look. So here comes the first thing I've learned. Yes, you can airbrush with Warpaint's Fanatic, but it requires some experience. If you're more of a beginner or are more of a brush painter like me and don't get out the airbrush that often, pre-thinned airbrush paints like Warpaint's Air or Game Color Air from Vallejo will make your life much easier. Since I started using these paints, I've been able to reduce the number of blockages and clogs by about 90%. Feel free to let me know in the comments whether I should make a video about airbrush paints and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss my future reviews as I have a lot of videos planned for 2024. Now with the airbrushing done, I started painting the base. I always dry brush the base at the beginning, not the end, because I don't want to accidentally hit the feet of my completed paint jobs with stray pigments. For shading the rocks, I used light tone wash and for the sand, strong tone wash, which I diluted with a bit of fanatic wash medium. My wash medium had sediments in the bottle, a bit like cloudy apple juice, but once dried, I didn't notice anything unusual. But you should keep an eye on this and use a different medium if necessary. In fact, contrast medium is my favorite medium for thinning washes and one coat paints, but it's quite expensive. I found that the spell magic from scale 75 is a good and affordable alternative. With the base done, I wanted to pick the colors for highlighting and shading the Exarch suit, the largest part of the model. It's always a good idea to work from the inside out and from the largest area to the smallest details. I wanted to be guided by the flexible triad system, so for the highlights, I went one step lighter than my base color wild green, which was ferocious green. For the shadows, I tried the darkest green of the triad, angel green. It was definitely serviceable, but not quite what I had in mind because I wanted 
wanted to lean into the cool green hue of the armor with a teal. So next, I tried the darker greens from the teal triad, but they were too muted for my taste. Ultimately, I used speed paints for shading, namely a mix of shamrock green and raging sea. To be honest, I could have just used Eldari Emerald Contrast paint, but because I said I wanted to use only War Paints Fanatic, I decided to stick to Army Painter products for this video and mixed a similar emerald color with speed paints. Last but not least, I needed an even brighter green than Ferocious Green for the second edge highlight, but in the deep green triad this was already the brightest color. So I looked around the other triads and found Mossy Green, the brightest color in the desaturated cool green triad. So, despite wanting to follow the flexible triad system for the green aspect warrior suits, in the end I had to combine colors from more than one triad and even speed paint to achieve the desired result. In fact, in my War Paints Fanatic review, I pointed out that not all of the triads are laid out in the same way. Some cover all tones from light to dark and evenly spaced increments, others lean more towards the brighter side. To help you navigate the War Paints Fanatic range, I've hand painted all 260 colors on plastic card and photographed them professionally. You can grab the digital swatch on my Patreon for a small donation. So, this is my advice number two. See the flexible triad system more as a starting point and don't be shy to combine colors from various triads or your existing collection. Now that the colors for the armor have been selected, it was time to put those shadows and highlights on the model. I panel lined the Exarch with my speed paint mix and tidied up the armor with a wild green base color. For the first highlight, I applied ferocious green to the edges of the suit and I must say, Warpaints Fanatic made that harder than I thought. As mentioned earlier, most Fanatic paints are relatively thick and need to be thinned with water to flow well from the brush without smudging details. Additionally, while the drying time is a bit longer than that of Citadel colors and the old war paints, it's definitely not as long as that of the paints I use most of the time these days, which are Two Thin Coats, Pro Cruel and the new Vallejo game color. In fact, for some reason, Fanatic paints tend to thicken relatively quickly, even on a wet palette, as you can see here. This meant that highlighting required some practice as I always had to keep an eye on the flow of the paint to achieve smooth and sharp highlights. I also noticed that some of the lighter colors, such as ferocious green here, tend to break apart quickly when thinned. I've illustrated this on a test model here. Do you see in the lines I drew with diluted ferocious green how the pigments are somewhat unevenly distributed? So I found highlighting with War Paints Fanatic initially frustrating. Fortunately, there is a solution. The War Paint Stabilizer Medium. Unlike many other acrylic mediums, the stabilizer is completely transparent and also quite thin. When I used it for dilution instead of water, not only did the flow properties improve, but the drying time, and thus the working time, became also a bit longer. As you can see on the right side here, the application and pigment distribution is more even with the added stabilizer. With this, layering and highlighting became much easier for me. So, this is number three. If you want to unlock the full potential of Warpaints Fanatic, be sure to get a bottle of Stabilizer Medium. It's also the perfect companion for glazing. Just to be clear though, not all colors pose the same problems when diluted. It seems to affect merely the lighter colors with lower opacity. Here you can see Mossy Green, which is my second highlight color, for which I used a little bit of Stabilizer Medium to improve the flow. But for the lighter colors from the Teal Triad, like Hydra Turquoise and Neptune Glow, which I used for highlighting the helmet, plain water was perfectly fine. Don't get me wrong, I think a lot of people will be very happy with these paints. So after getting a handle on my dilution issues, I proceeded to work through the various details of the model. I wanted the Striking Scorpions to be part of my existing Ulf Way and Craftworld Ibrisil collection. I painted all these models way before the release of War Paints Fanatic, using a wild mix of different paint ranges, including Citadel, Vallejo and old War Paints. But for this video, I wanted to try replicating my existing color palette using War Paints Fanatic only. After all, the Fanatic range has 260 colors, so there should be plenty of options, right? Well, yes and no. While I found replacements for most of the colors I used in my original paint scheme, there were three or four that posed a bit of a challenge. Rakar Flash, 
Deathclaw Brown, the old Wormand Brown, and to some extent Doombull Brown, all from Games Workshop. Warm, orange brown tones are missing in the Fnatic range, all the brown colors tend to be somewhat muted. Carnelian Skin was an acceptable match for Citadel's Doombull Brown, my original base color for the leather pouches and straps. However, to replace Wormand Brown and Deathclaw Brown, which are used for highlighting the leather, there was no way around mixing colors. For this, I lightened Carnelian Skin with excessive amounts of Lava Orange, one of the lighter colors from the Orange Triad. More challenging was finding a replacement for Rakar Flesh, which I originally used for the Wraithbone weapons. Rakar Flesh has quite a unique shade. It's a grayish beige with a hint of red. To concoct a matching hue from Warpaint's Fnatic, I had to experiment quite a bit with various mixes. In the end, I came up with a mix of about one part of Obsidian Skin, two parts of Gargoyle Grey and two parts of Command Khaki, which provided quite a good match. So this is my finding number 4. The Warpaint's Fnatic range offers a broad selection of 260 colors. And yes, the color palette covers all the corners you'd expect from a miniature paint range. It includes all primary colors like yellow, green, red and blue, secondary and tertiary colors, metallics, washes and so on. But in direct comparison, individual colors seem to be a bit different from most other ranges despite the wide selection. Especially the warm grays, bone colors, browns and skin tones are quite different from, for example, their counterparts in the Citadel color range. Because I know many of you are interested in transitioning to the Warpaint's Fnatic range, I've started to make these hand-painted charts not only for Warpaint's Fnatic, but all major paint ranges like Citadel and Game Color paints. As they are compatible with each other, they allow you to compare colors, convert your old paint schemes, or follow tutorials from White Dwarf or Games Workshop's YouTube channel with non-Citadel paints. You can grab these on my Patreon, link is in the description below. So, after some more work, this is what my striking Scorpion Exarch looks like. I hope you enjoy my take on this iconic Aspect Warrior Shrine, and if you're interested, I also made a complete step-by-step -step tutorial for this model. But before we end this video, let's take a look at the finish. In my Warpaint's Fnatic review, I noted that the Fnatic range dries to a satin finish. The finish is slightly less glossy than the old Army Painter Warpaints, but not as matte as, for example, the Leo model color or newer paint ranges like AK 3rd Gen, Two Thin Coats, Pro Accrual or the new Vallejo game colors. I would say they are equivalent to the finish of Citadel paints, so don't throw these away. Their finish complements the Fnatic range quite nicely. Matte paints are often less scratch resistant because the resins used are less durable. Additionally, glossy paints and also varnishes are smoother on a microscopic level, providing less traction for abrasion. As I read in the comments of my last video, many of you actually prefer a satin finish. Personally, the finish is not super important to me, since I always varnish my models in the end, which changes the finish anyway. I do this not only for protection, but to unify the finishes of the various paint ranges I use, which may have different levels of madness. However, I must say that I find matte paints more pleasant to work with while painting. This is maybe a YouTuber thing, but when I film for videos, I need very strong light sources, which can cause more distracting reflections with glossier paints. Especially when highlighting black, this can sometimes be challenging for my eyes. Do you also use a strong desk lamp and have ever noticed this, or is it just me? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to know how to find the perfect matte varnish that truly leaves your miniatures matte without ruining them with a cloudy or frosty finish, then be sure to check out this video here on the right and also don't miss my detailed Warpaints Fanatic review. See you soon and happy hobbying!